I borrow the title of my talk from a love poem by Barbara Guest. It goes, parachutes, my love, could carry us higher. Now I went flying over the weekend and strapped on an actual parachute, only to realize how ridiculously optimistic those lines were. But if you read closely, these lines very beautifully represent the kind of world that you and I live in. Where on one hand, you've got the kind of global challenges that we face of poverty, healthcare, migration. And on the other, you've got parachutes, these optimistic parachutes, like the economist saying that creative problem solving, complex to simplifying the thinking and creativity are the three key skills that you and I, the workforce of tomorrow, need to possess by the year 2020. Now, how do we reconcile these two realities? How do we actually use creativity to create the kind of impact that you and I wish to see? Well, thankfully, I have a story. Up until July this year, I was working on a fantastic development program in India. When, we, when me and my research partner, who is now an LSE, <laughs> were working on challenges around maternal health. And one of the challenges that we were working on was that pregnant women weren't coming back for health checkups. So what we were essentially doing was that if you right there are a pregnant woman, then we were asking you to come back on, say, the 19th of December for your next checkup. And you back there, we were asking you to come back on the 13th of January. But you wouldn't come. So we started breaking this, this problem into smaller bits and pieces. And we tried to understand what was causing this. One of the issues was, of course, the high levels of illiteracy. Where you're working with a female population that was 47% illiterate. And therefore, writing and giving it to you was not a solution. But then we came, up with, we came across something rather peculiar which was that when I told you December and I asked you to come back in January, we were talking in two different languages where you wouldn't understand what December meant and you wouldn't understand what January was. Because you couldn't understand the Gregorian calendar and that's the kind of population we were working with. Now, I don't want you to exotify this population in your head. This is very real. A lot of people around the globe don't follow the kind of calendars that you and I follow. So we did the most obvious thing. We stepped in and we asked them about what their ideas of time were. So we went in and we asked them, can you try to remember when you got married? We went to other women and we said, can you try to remember when your first kid was born? And we got replies, we got answers. And these were, yes, I remember. I got married in the month of such and such a festival. And I remember my kid was born just a couple of days before the death of my neighbor. Now, when you're working on a state-level healthcare policy, you can't really rely on local systems and ideas of time such as this. So we went to the drawing board and we started ideating. And after 134 failed ideas, we came up with something. Something that was always there, staring down at us. And it happened to be the moon. So what we now started doing was that I asked you, instead of coming in December, I asked you to just come back after one full moon. And you, on the other hand, I asked you to come back after two full moons. And guess what? You came. And it worked. And we saw women actually coming in, looking at the moon, also religiously, because you had a lot of religions tied up with the day the full moon was. And you came back. Now, there are far more complex problems that are being solved by far simpler solutions. You go to Malawi today and you're going to see drones flying around by UNICEF, which are carrying healthcare reports, HIV reports for infants that live in villages with little to no road connectivity. You go online, you do it right now, and you're going to find on Google fonts available, designed by designers such as 
Christian Boer that are helping kids with dyslexia read better. You go to New York, you visit the United Nations headquarters, and you're going to find virtual reality headsets, extremely science fiction. But what these are doing is that they're transporting policymakers to halfway around the globe to a refugee camp in Jordan to see what they're designing for. The reality is that we live in a world that's not only expecting us to look for solutions in the most unobvious places, it's incentivizing us to do so. And therefore, the fact of the matter is that let's not forget that we live in a world where the moon is saving lives of women, where drones, virtual reality headsets, and fonts are bettering lives of individuals around the globe. We live in a far more optimistic world, which is urging you to look for the most unobvious solutions to the most complex problems. And that is exactly how and exactly why parachutes, my love, will carry us higher. Thank you. <laughs>